morning, everyone. Welcome to the path to 1 million. This is episode 98. Episode 100 will be coming this Monday. I hope you guys will all pay attention then because uh, I'm going to not only release the number one, ex the number one uh, most watched, most liked, most commented on video out there from this series. It uh, looks like my hair is out of control, but uh, not only that, but uh, some announcements and some other goodies are coming as well. So just want to let you know, keep your eyeballs peeled this Monday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Videos coming out. And speaking of most watched videos, today I have the third most uh, popular video. And for this one here, we have to go into the Wayback Machine. And that would actually be episode number five, uh, which was uh, actually hilarious because when I first started off doing these Facebook Lives, I was absolutely horrible. I was absolutely abysmal here. But this one actually ranked at the top because it actually had the most number of views uh, at 140, which I think is great. So thank you for everybody who put their eyeballs on a particular video. In that video, I talked about the importance of making sure that uh, as any kind of a business, whether you're a profit or for profit, how important it is for you to share your story, share your struggle. And I said this the other day, and I kind of put it out there. It's more like a theory rather than a law, but most everything that's out there is commoditized, whether that's knowledge, whether that's experience, whether that's jobs. There's very few people out there that have the market on uh, a very singular idea, and they don't have any kind of competition whatsoever. So when, when people are sitting down to decide who they're going to do business with or who they're going to donate money to, it really boils down to the person or to the individual uh, that they are taking a look at. So uh, for instance, like even like the other day, right? I, I went on this thing about how Amnesty International showed up at my door. All they wanted was money from me. They had an opportunity to create that relationship with me. They chose not to, they didn't want my email address. They just turned around and walked away from my door. Uh, so like I said, you know, when, whenever you're doing business, I might not be a, I might not be a customer that day. I may not be a donor that day, but at some point in time down the road, I might be. But if you don't make that investment in the relationship by sharing stories, by talking about uh, the good times, the bad times that you're going through, building your business, or talking about uh, maybe lessons that you're learning from the people that are around you, then, you know, people don't get to know you. Uh, and if they don't know you, they're not going to like you. They're certainly not going to trust you, which is the three you know, prerequisites for people to do business. So any of this, I wanted to talk about uh, losing sight of your goals, because this is something that has happened to me on more than one occasion. And it's something that I actively work on. Uh, a few months back, uh, I was in Michigan. And when I go back to Michigan and I'm there for a little bit of time, I always Airbnb out my house here in California. Why not make some extra money while I'm doing it? While I was in Michigan, this heat wave came through Southern California. And the next thing I know, I got a phone call from the people staying at my house that my AC unit went on the brink. So I'm like, great, here's a problem that I gotta get fixed. Well, when I renovated the house many moons ago, uh, I worked with an AC heating company and I loved these guys. They were so cool and I felt like I could trust them. They weren't taking advantage of me. Uh, all these other AC companies were in there giving me these obnoxious quotes and telling me that you know, they couldn't use anything that I had on the premises, but this other company said, yeah, everything works just fine. It's not an issue. They charged me a lot less money. So anyways, I already had an established relationship with them. So when my AC unit went out, they were the first ones that I called. Uh, of course, when I finally got their secretary uh, receptionist on the phone, she said to me, she goes, well, just let you know that because of the heat wave that's going on, we're getting phone calls from everybody on the planet. Everybody's AC unit is on the brink or we're out installing AC units right now. And she said, I'll be honest with you, it's probably gonna be two or three days before we can get to you. Now, I didn't think two or three days is that big of a deal. And I said, yeah, that's no problem whatsoever. You know, just put me on the schedule and let me know. And she said, okay, we will let you know. So two days went by, I didn't hear anything. So I called them up on the phone just to make sure they didn't forget about me. Called them up on the phone and you know, the lady said, yep, sorry, we're just super busy. We cannot get there tomorrow, but I promise you by Friday, that we'll have it there. So now I'm thinking this is now five days that have gone by where the people inside of my house that are staying there don't have AC. And the thing is, is that when it's getting 90 degrees in Long Beach and that house just warms up like crazy, it's like in an oven and it makes sleeping at night like basically intolerable. 
So I'm communicating with the guests, letting them know that, hey, you know, the AC people are going to be there this day and stuff, da, 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 da. Well, what wind up happening was because, you know, through Airbnb, if they filed a complaint, they could have got most of their money back saying that there wasn't any AC. So I, I took the initiative and I said, look, I appreciate the fact that the AC is out. I'll offer you a discount. We negotiated back and forth and boom, I slid them some money back uh, from their house stay. I was a little bit bummed that I lost money on the transaction, but you know, I, I wanna make sure that they're happy. So there we go. Well, Friday, uh, I get a phone call from them and, and the secretary says, a technician will be at your house today by five o'clock or if not, first thing tomorrow. So these Airbnb guests have left. I got new Airbnb guests coming in. I already told them the situation with the AC. And I said, okay, that's cool. But now it's a week and now I'm starting to get irritated because for some reason or another, I keep getting bumped off, keep getting bumped off. And I had a feeling it was something simple. So anyway, she said, you know, today by five or tomorrow, they'll be there. And I said, okay, cool. Well, I didn't hear anything back Friday night. So I just assumed that they would be there on Saturday. Saturday morning came and went, there was nothing. So remember I'm on East Coast time at this point. So when it got to be like three in the afternoon, which would be 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and I didn't hear anything. I called them up on the phone. And of course, their offices are closed on the weekends. So I'm like, great. You know, so then what I did is I called another AC company and the lady said, you know, I'm terribly sorry you're getting the runaround. We will be there Tuesday at eight o'clock. If you want us to confirm the appointment, we will. So I thought about it there for a second. And of course, you know, my brain is like, you know what's going to happen, Cliff? You'll confirm this appointment. And then Monday, the AC people will call and say, we'll be there today to get it fixed because they'll feel bad because they didn't get it fixed on the weekends. So I told the lady, I said, no, nah. I said, just, I'll let you know if I need something. Well, Monday comes and goes and I don't hear anything from the AC people, like nothing at all. So finally I call them up on the phone and I'm like, hey, you told me that somebody was gonna be there Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. I didn't get any phone calls. The AC is still not fixed. And the lady goes, oh, I'm really sorry, Cliff. The technician, there must've been some confusion in there. You know, and I half expected her to say, we'll have somebody out there today. But that did not happen. So then Tuesday rolls around now and it's like late in the afternoon and I finally get a phone call from the owner who says, we're, we're you know, like 10 minutes from your house. We're gonna go over there and we're gonna take a look at it. I will call you by the end of today with a resolution. But by now my guests that are, my current guests are in the house, they have been baking forever. And so the next day rolls around and of course, you know, the guy says, I'll call you later today. He never calls, right? It's now at the end of the day. Now it's like Wednesday. So this problem has been lingering for almost two weeks and I, I'm, I'm livid. But then I remembered something that I had been listening to on a Jocko podcast. And he talks about this in his book, Extreme Ownership. Something, it's a book that I've dissected a, you know, a million times. I think I can learn a lot about leadership from him. But I go and I take a look and, and he always talks about in there like, you know, whenever the situation is getting rough, the first thing you need to do is you need to take a step back. And he always talks about like the six inches, just take yourself back, just detach from the situation and look around and see what's going on. And it occurred to me that when I did that, when I took a step back from the situation, I had to ask myself one simple thing, right? When I started off on this whole thing, my goal was super simple, fix the AC. That was it. I just wanted to fix the AC so they could be happy, so I wouldn't lose any more money. But what happened was, is my goal shifted right? And I didn't do it intentionally. It just shifted. And it went from fix the AC to all of a sudden have this AC company fix the problem. That's became the goal. And because I was so fixated on having this one AC company fix, I lost track of the bigger goal in my mind. And as soon as I saw that, it was like as clear as day. And I, I was like, you know what? This is stupid. So I called the other company and I said, I need you guys to book an appointment. And they said, well, we can be there like Thursday at eight o'clock in the morning. I said, great because at least I knew that they would show up. And it just so happened that on Wednesday afternoon, I got a call from the owner of this company that said, yep, we discovered what the problem was. There was actually two issues with your AC unit, but we fixed them both. Your AC unit is running just fine. We're super sorry that this happened, blah, blah, blah. But it was, it was one of those things where I realized that, you know, in my attempt to just get the problem fixed, I had shifted the focus. If I had taken a step back earlier, in the entire process when I first called them up on the phone and when I when I all of a sudden got delayed like right? somebody will be there today nobody was there that's when I should have picked up the phone and had somebody else come out there to do it trust goes a long way in this business I totally get that but at the end of the day am I more concerned with taking care of my own business or am I more concerned about taking care of somebody else's business and in my mind it wasn't worth it really at the end of the day 
because the AC unit in and of itself cost me about 280 bucks to get fixed, which is not that big of a deal. But I refunded close to $600 to the Airbnb guests that were staying at my house. So the true cost to get this AC unit fixed was probably closer to a thousand bucks. If I had taken action, if I had kept my eye on the ball and said the primary goal here is to get the AC unit fixed in the house, I just need somebody to come over there and fix it, then I wouldn't have lost so much money. I would have refunded probably some money for the people up front that reported the problem, but the next set of guests that came through the door, that would not have happened. So it really is about making sure that when you have that goal in mind, that you keep that goal in mind. Don't shift your focus. Don't get obsessed with this is the one path and one path only because then your, your goal shifting, whatever it is, focuses from achieving this objective versus following this path, which is exactly what I was guilty of. And uh, something that I'm going to have to remind myself on a daily basis. And I actually got bit on it again. Uh, it was a one time wasn't enough, but lesson learned. I'll show that story on another day. Anyways, I've taken up enough of your time today. So I'm going to call it a day. I hope your guys' Saturday goes really well. And I will talk to you again tomorrow with another episode and the second most popular episode of my Facebook Lives. And I will see you then. Have a great weekend.